Hi, Andreas from Total here. And today we're going to learn about multi-page websites. So if you've been following this course, you know that we've learned about building for static websites. Then we've learned building dynamic websites using data from an API. And in the last video in this series, we learned about events and workflows and how we can use them to build interactive websites. Today, we're going to step that up by adding multiple pages to application. Um, if you haven't uh, seen the other videos, I really recommend watching them first, especially the building dynamic websites with APIs and the last one, events and workflows, because we're going to be building on a lot of that knowledge today. Uh, so it really helps if you're familiar with those concepts ahead of time. Right, so up until now, everything we've done has been in a single page. We've only created our home page, and we've just been building on that. So today we're going to learn how we can add new pages to our project, how we can define the URL for those pages so where we can find them, and how we can link between them. And finally, we can see how we can use data stored in the URL inside our uh, pages. So here I am on my total dashboard, and I am going to create a new project. I'm going to choose the blank template, and I think a cake emoji, and I'm going to call this project books. And for this project, we're going to use something called Project Gutenberg, which is a free and open collection of about, I think, 70,000 ebooks that are free to download and free to read online. And they have this nice uh, API called Guten Index. I think it's an independently uh, put up API, but it lets us essentially fetch data about these ebooks uh, from Project Gutenberg. Uh, and we're going to use that in the page we're building today. So um, let's go back here. Our project is ready, and we're going to click Edit on our dev branch. And uh, right off the bat, we get our standard template uh, homepage. Uh, we're just going to change the title to books. Or let's call it ebooks. There we go. And uh, free to read. There we go. Uh, so we're going to keep styling very simple for today since the, the purpose of this video is about uh, pages and uh, navigation. Uh, so the first thing we want to add here is we're going to add a link to this page and here we go and as we add it you can see that the link actually shows up as what's called an a tag uh, so this is because in the browser uh, an a tag in html is actually how we do links we normally just call them links but it is actually an a or referred to as an anchor tag uh, so i'm gonna say uh, books is uh, or uh, let's say uh, browse books uh, here, that's going to be the, the text inside our link. And to actually make the link work and make it go to another page, we're going to go to attributes and then sets the, set the AREF attribute. And again, the a, AREF attribute here is what tells the link tag or the A tag here, where should you go when the link is clicked. In this case, we're going to go to slash books. There we go, right? Um, so... Now we've sort of said, hey, go to this, like whatever, in this case, books.total.site slash books. That's going to be the URL where you can find this page, this new page. Uh, and that's where we're going. We're clicking this link. So let's go and create that new page. Uh, so I'm going to open up my project panel. And then here on the pages, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it books. And um, on this page... First of all, I am going to make sure this container is minimum full height. I'm just going to set the background color to something like, I think, a little bit off gray. That's pretty good. And then let's add a heading one. We should always have a heading one on all our pages uh, so we know what we are. Nope, that was a background color. That's not quite. I'm just going to move myself a bit. There we go. Uh, back. Uh, here we're setting the text color to be, yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. Add a bit of padding. Um, and this should, of course, read uh, books. There we go, right? Um, so, so far, so good. 
uh, if we go here to our data tag in or set a data tab inside our page, we can see we've got this page section, and this shows the current URL uh, or path. We normally call the last part of a URL after the slash. That's called the path uh, part of a URL, and here we can see that slash books um, matching what our URL is going to point to to visit this page, right? Uh, if we open up this, uh, we can actually see a little bit more info. We can see that we have, uh, we can edit our URL. Um, we can see that we can edit the path uh, this um, this page is on. And we can sort of preview the URL up here. We can also edit this meta uh, information up here. And if I go and edit the meta information here to books, and a free e download node free wow free ebooks there we go so the meta title here is what um both informs search engines about what is the title of this page and what is it about uh, the description does the same, get a little bit more information. This is really good for optimizing your SEO. It's very important you set both these. So if, if your page needs to be discovered by search engines, make sure you set both of these. Uh, the title also is what gets displayed in this little uh, tab up here. So make sure for every page to set that uh, so you've got a nice title and people can see what they're, what, the, what they're looking at and what page they're on, right? Good. Uh, so now that we just created this, this is a very simple site. We're going to add more content to it in a little second, but let's just first of all check that everything works. So if we go to the home page and then we go to preview, we get our ebook site here. And if we click browse books, we get redirected to our books site, right? And maybe actually we should just here in books, uh, let's go and add a link back. Back to home. There we go. And on the href, we're just going to put in a slash because that's back to our home page, right? Uh, let's go and try that. And we see we now got back to home and we can go back to our ebook. Right? Excellent. But we actually want to go to our books page, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an API to our books page so we can fetch books from uh, this project Gutenberg, right? So let's go and add a new API. We're going to call it books. And we're going to go to this Guten index. And then here in the example, it just says slash books. And this is the same as we remember with the link. That means it's going to be this URL and then slash books. So we're just going to copy the URL, put that inside here in the, um, the URL in our um, uh, API and we're getting some weird text data here. So we're going to add the path books. And now we're actually getting our results, right? So first we were just loading the actual HTML page that didn't make so much sense for an API, right? We want our JSON data back. So we get it here on slash books. Um, and we're just getting a, a bunch of results here. And for now, that's fine. Later, we'll, we'll, we'll show how we can actually search through this and, and, and have a little bit more control of what kind of uh, pages, what kind of um, content we get back, right? Um, so this is all good. We're going to add to here. We're going to add a list. Nope, that was a link. That was a miss. Uh, we're going to add a list. And in this case, I don't think we want the same styling. It doesn't look so good here. So actually, I think we'll just clear out the styling uh, and kill these extra ones. And in this uh, list item, uh, let's just fix the text styling to be darker. Yeah. I think we want to add in an image um, first and maybe just constrain it a bit in width. Something like 20. I think that's pretty good. Um, and we're going to fix the height on this so it doesn't overflow. Make it flow this direction. And we're sort of getting, I promise not to do spend too much, oh, that was the wrong one, too much time on styling, but we are getting the, the bare minimum, right? Uh, good. Um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, let's take our list item and just like we did in the 
um, video called Building Dynamic uh, Web Pages with APIs. We're going to repeat over our list item, and we're going to do that by choosing repeat, and then going and choosing our data we got back from the API. And we've got a books API here. We're going to click data. And whatever we get back here inside data depends on the API. So it's important to understand that's just total passing the JSON data coming back from the API. Uh, so this can look will look different for every single API. So you often have to do a little bit of exploring to figure out what data did I actually get back and what can I actually use, right? Um, so in this case, what we're looking for is results. And we can see that's a nice list here of uh, array of results. And that's exactly what we want uh, for our repeat item, right? So now we repeated it. Now we can take our image, we can set its source attribute. And again here, when we're doing the, and if you remember from the API um, video, how we used uh, the repeat item to actually get access to the different bits of information for each item we're repeating. Um, right here, we kind of sometimes needs to go a little bit more exploring. Uh, so it turns out here under media type was not the right one. I think we're looking for formats. That was the one. Uh, so again, this is different for every API. So if you're not in control, if you haven't built the API, you're consuming a public API or something someone else built, you have to go exploring a little bit, right? That's, that's just the name of the game. Uh, and here we're going to look at the formats. There's an image JPEG. Uh, that kind of looks like what we're looking for, right? And that turns out pretty good, right? Uh, this looks pretty much exactly like, like what we're looking for. This is, that's just a very small image. And that's how that is, okay? Fair enough. Um, for the list item, we're just going to go and change that to be the item title. And we could add, or we should actually probably add author, but we, we could add all of these things. And, and I mean, you can go and play with this. The Guten Index API is free, so go and play with it. For now, again, we're going to keep it quite simple, right? We, this is all we want. So, so far, we haven't really done much for this page um, that really changed anything from the API. It was just a different API, but it's still just a dynamic site like the other one. So what we want to do here is we want to add, uh, if we look at our Guten index, index, they actually describe down here where we can set something like search. And they're showing here that you can do that with the query params. And of course, uh, total support that as well. So if we go and we can just try it here in our API. If we open up the API books, we can add queries. We can call it search. And here we can say Romeo, right? No, Romeo. Right, and we go, wait, actually, that was the first one we got. Let's uh, get Gatsby. Um, and we get the Great Gatsby, right? So now the book coming up is the Great Gatsby. There's only the one, right? So we can add this search param to our API query. That was dictated by the API. And, and because and by doing that, we can um, change the results we get back. So that's pretty good. Um, but obviously, we don't want to hard code it uh, in here. And when I say hard code, I mean some that we define the value as we're developing. That's what we call hard coding. It's probably not a term that translates particularly well to no code. Uh, now that I think of it, but um, what we what we want to do is have this value change. We want the user to be able to change this value to decide what they're searching for, right? And uh, in the last example with. Uh, showing how to build interactive applications, we use the variable to store data like this, right? In that case, it was showing and hiding a dialogue, but in this case, um, we're going to use it to store, uh, we could use it to store the, the search query. But in this, we actually don't want to use a variable in this case. And there's a, there's a really good reason for that, because um, we're going to use a query param instead. So right here, and this works the same way as it did with the API, right? We added that question mark query thing, right? The same way we do with APIs, this is what we're doing here because we're still dealing with URLs. So it's the same concept, right? But the difference is this is going to be a query param in the URL for our page, not in the URL we're using to call the API, right? So I'm going to add a query param and I'm going to call it search again. And we need to give it a test value. 
Um, and we're going to call it great, just because that seems like it'll give some specific results, but probably a few of them, right? Now, the test value is here is just while you're developing in Toddle, right? That's going to say, well, in order for me to use this page and actually use that value somewhere and get the API to provide some data, I need like an example value of what this search per param might be. When your application is actually running, this test value is not used at all, right? But we define this uh, query param search, right? And query params are always optional. Like th that's sort of per definition, you don't have to supply, uh, apply them. So always when you're building, make sure that there's a good default behavior if you don't have a search param. Um, but in this case, this allows us to add that to the yeah, URL. So let's see how we can use this inside our API, right? So I'm going to open the API again. And then here, instead of saying just search directly, I'm going to use a formula just like with the API when we create a new API and when we created a variable in the last video. Once we have the data available, we're going to see it pop up here in our formulator. In this case, I'm going to choose search. And this is where, as I just mentioned, uh, we want to make sure that there's a sensible default value. So uh, the default value will often be null if there's no if there's nothing provided. So in this case, what we actually want to do is we want to add default to, and then here uh, we're going to add the string empty. So this is just sort of to let the API know that if I'm going to give you this query param, but if you but if you don't need it, right, if I don't actually have anything in mind, I'm going to fall to an empty string. And that's going to let the API know that you're searching, whatever you're searching for an empty string, you're basically saying give me everything, right? Um, right, so let's go and see how, uh, how this actually, um, works. Let's go and check it out, right? We're going to go and we're going to check out our preview page, right? And here we can see we now loaded up all our, um, all our books here. And if we go and change our URL with, for example, search, I can say Gatsby, uh, this is going to load just the great Gatsby, right? So it's now going to look at this query param in our URL and say, um, let's say, um, anything with Mr. in it. It's got to be a lot of books with Mr. The strange case of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Excellent, right? A lot of things with Mr. in it, right? And the benefit of doing this, like the good thing about storing um, the search as part of the URL in this query param instead of having it, for example, in a variable, is that I can now copy this URL, right? And this works the way URLs are supposed to work, that when I send you this, what you see on your screen is going to be the same thing I saw on my screen, right? So every time you need to use data or sort of state uh, in your application, you always have to sort of think, well, is this something that belongs in a database or maybe you should store it in a, some sort of backend solution? Should it be part of the URL? Do I want this to affect how uh, affect my application when I'm sharing. So for example, if it's like a dialogue, probably don't want that to be part of the URL, whether you should show a dialogue or not. But uh, in this case, a search uh, parameter or search query is very, very relevant, right? Because if I'm saying, hey, do you like any of these books? I really need the person I'm sending it to to see the same list of books that I am, right? Right. Oh, I can see. I'm just going to refresh. So I had a bit of a connection issue. Um, yes, good, good. The API, the Guten in Guten Dex API is not the fastest one. We were the news API reacted a lot faster. Unfortunately, in this case, there's not really much we can do about it. That's kind of an API issue and has to be decided on the F, um, end. But I'm still quite liking the API, so I don't think it's a it's a problem for our case here, right? Um. So one more thing I want to add here is that um, just like we can we can use links when and we can add query params there, we can also update them on the same side. So we don't have to actually go to a new side or reload a page in order to change our query param. So here, I want to add in here an uh, input. Do I have search? No, we didn't have. We just have input. Uh, I'm going to move that up over the URL like this and let's just sort out some of the styling a bit uh, so background color is gonna be like that we're gonna keep it here i think 
good and the width should be 100%, which is going to be really big on some apps, but maybe we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we're fine with that. We're not going to worry too much, right? So now that we have this input, um, we can use that to sort out our search, to actually have that update our search. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set its value to actually be the value of our search. And again, if it's not set, I don't want to display any sort of null value, so I'm just going to say default to, and then we're going to do string uh, empty like that, right? So in this case, our input value should be great. Oh, I just need to fix my... I was like, why is that not working? It is working. I just set the text color and the background color to be the same thing, which is not so great. So here we go, changing the text color. So now the input is great because it took that value from that URL parameter and our test value in here. So in, when we're editing, it's great, right? Now I want to add an event and that is when I, and I'm going to change the input event, and when I change this uh, element, I want to uh, set search. And again, because I created this param in the URL, just like with the formula, now here in the action, um, in the workflow editor, I now have an option of action, the optional action of setting search. And I want to set that to my input events, target value. So this can look a little bit weird, but what that basically says is that when I create this input event, right, um, or this change event, um, the target is the element that generated that event. That is my input event, right? Uh, my input element. So the target here refers back to the element that triggered this. And its value is essentially what it says, what was the value that was um, that was triggered? Like what, what is the value it has as this change event happened, right? So whenever I make a change in an input, that's when you're uh, moving focus away from the input or hitting enter. That's when, you're, when you trigger a change event for an input. And in that case, here, that's how we capture what was the value of that input at that time. Because we only want to update our URL when you make that change. We don't want to do it as you type because we don't want to update the URL that often. The browser gets kind of angry if you do that. So you want to do it, you can do it fairly quickly, but you don't want to do it on every keystroke, right? So we only do it on change. In this case, we're grabbing that, val that value out of the input. Um, and that actually probably should do it. So let's um, let's go and test this on our on our website. We'll just refresh, and we should get a very very large input. Um, let's search for dog, and it says it takes a little while. As I say, the, the it can be a little bit uh, slow to load, but I see now we have this search, and we say um, books. I'll just for books for books. That's very meta. Right. So we can now search inside our book list, right? And whenever we search, whenever we change the search param, we actually change our URL uh, param up here as well, right? So this sort of allows us to, um, to have a page that's interactive and dynamic and that it fetches data, but it also persists its state, if you will. To the URL that so we can share with other people, and if we want to, we can even go. We can go and we could also go from the home page and saying. Uh, so we have the A, and then we go books about uh, browse books about dogs, and then we could just change this A attribute here to be search. Oh, oops. Question mark search dogs right and if we went and, and opened that we when we go to browse books about dogs it already has the dog set right so that was a, a quick intro to how uh, you can use create new pages and multiple pages um, and how we can link between them and also how we can use the URL to store this kind of information now, there's one last thing I want to show you um, when it comes to storing uh, 
uh, information URL. And we're going to go back to the books page. So you might have seen here um, that we also have the option of adding multiple uh, of these path segments. And it has this little tech param. And we're going to, uh, let's say, um, we're going to call it name here, right? And we can make that a param. Um, so what that means is that um, this page will now be available not on slash books, but it'll be on slash books slash and then some value that represents its name. So it means pretty much slash book slash anything will work here. So I'm actually going to go and delete my search param. And actually, we'll rename this to search just to show. Um, test. That'll probably be fine. Uh, so what we did here is we, instead of having search in our query param, we added as a parameter as part of our path. Now, it works exactly the same, almost exactly the same as a query param, at least inside the... Uh, Inside the application, right, we still have um, search here. We still, search still works the same, right? Our, our UI still works the same. It doesn't care that the URL parameter has been moved into part being part of the path instead of part of the query. Um, there's two significant differences. One of them is that search is no longer optional. So you have to provide it when it's part of the path. The other bit is that when it's part of the path, it changes what URL you're sort of on. And I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, if we now go to preview, uh, you'll note that it says slash book slash test because that's what it says. Like it just tried to redirect you to a test value, right? Um, and if I now search for uh, dogs, it updates that part of the path now. So what we really did is we changed where the data is, right? Uh, from a query param to being part of the path. If you're not quite sure if something should be, you would prefer to have it in the path of the query, I think the easiest way to think of it is still, is this a required parameter? That means, does it is it required for the page to work? Then it should be part of the path. If not, that means it's um, optional, of course. Uh, and I think search in this case very much is. You don't need a search query for this page to work. You you could start with an empty query. And honestly, you probably do want to do that most of the time, right? And in that case, uh, it should be part of the query program, right? Now you learned how to create pages in total how to link between them using links, um, and how the URL of a page can be used to store information used inside that page. Um, so I hope this was really helpful. Um, we've got a lot more videos coming out in this series, so if you haven't subscribed, do so now so you get notified when they arrive. Um, please leave a comment if there was anything uh, that was unclear you want to know or have any questions about this. Leaving comments is a great way to do that. We make sure to reply to as many as we can. Um, and also, Toddle is going into an open beta on May 1st. So if you haven't signed up for the wait list already, go do that. Come support us on Product Hunt, and, and we can't wait to hear everything about Toddle.